Today we're checking out Steel Seed, which is a brand new stealth action game that dropped a little bit over two weeks ago and developers have provided me with a free kit to test. It's got some really interesting ideas and in this video I'll walk you through the gameplay, performance, graphic settings and whether it's worth your time on the Steam Deck. Stick around because there's a specific setup that makes a huge difference. So what's Steel Seed all about? You play as Zoe. She's stealthy, skilled and not exactly on friendly terms with the machines running in the underground world humanity is hiding in. Your companion Kobe is a small flying drone with attitude and honestly it's kind of a highlight. It helps distract enemies, scan areas and solve puzzles. There's banter between the two that breaks up the tension and it's actually an integral part of the game. The gameplay focuses heavily on stealth, think cloaking, sneaking through shadows, avoiding vision cones, but you actually had the choice to just go in head first and not use stealth at all. You can use Zoe's electrical powers and Kobe's hacks. The stealth is simple, but it's pretty satisfying. The game kind of reminds me of early Sprint to Cell games with a touch of a Tomb Raider traversal and there's also platforming and puzzle solving and it's actually pretty interesting. Visually, Steel Seed wants to wow you with lighting, reflections and atmosphere. The environments are dark, intentionally moody, but also sometimes too dark, especially on the Steam Deck. I kind of find that uh, I had to go all the way through to max brightness. Even at max brightness, some scenes felt very hard to read. Other than that, the other action is actually pretty solid clean sci-fi corridors, detailed robots, dramatic lighting, but the fidelity drops hard on the Steam Deck even when you treat things the right way. And with that in mind, let's talk performance out of the box, still see set to lowest settings with FSR set to performance, looks and performs very very badly. Now FSR in this game as well as XCSS have some terrible ghosting and because the game relies a lot on lights and reflections, there's also a lot of flickering. Now with these settings, you're able to get mostly between 30 to 40 FPS, but it is pretty unstable. There is gonna be some stuttering. Next, I tried setting FSR to balanced and uh, the frame rate dipped down to 30, but uh, it still looks pretty awful. You get shimmering, lighting flicker, and Zoe's movement just goes like crazy. It's really distracting, especially with uh, a lot of motion, and there is a lot of motion in this game. Uh, you are able to go pretty fast on some scenes. Now I tried every upscaler available because yes, this game gives you FSR, XSS and TSR and XSS actually looks even worse than FSR. I'm not really sure how in some games XSS looks better, in others FSR looks better. XSS compared to FSR has less flickering and less ghosting but it makes everything soft and weirdly blurry. Uh, and all the textures uh, look even worse. They're still ghosting and uh, definitely I don't recommend playing this game with XSS even on the highest quality settings it doesn't look great. Uh, FSR quality is better uh, but it's still noisy uh, especially if you look at shadows and eventually I landed on TSR set to quality. Uh, this is where things kind of clicked. So the best settings that I found what worked for me is setting everything to the absolute lowest now resolution, it says 720p, but it's actually 800p, it's just in windowed mode. Um, upscaler that I used was TSR set to quality. Now I tried ultra quality and ultra quality plus, and while it does look better in combat with more than three or four enemies on the screen, you will drop to about 25 FPS, so it's not recommended. If you set it to quality, uh, you can drop frames, but it's gonna be to 28, 29 FPS, and most of the time, like 90% of the time, it will be 30 FPS. Uh, V-Sync off, motion blur off, uh, you can see all of these post-processing effects like vignette and others I have turned to the lowest. Uh, every advanced option is also turned to the lowest. Now with this combo I got steady 30 FPS almost everywhere, even during combat it would drip to 29 but mostly it will be 30 uh, and even in larger rooms and battery life on the OLED uh, with these settings sits at around 2 hours and 45 minutes and on the LCD that would be around an hour and 30 minutes. Now temperatures on the OLED hovered around 75 to 80 degrees, which is not crazy high, but definitely on the warmer side, especially for OLED, and you'll feel the heat from the back after 20-30 minutes of gameplay. Uh, the fan did actually get really loud. I think its max RPM is like 6000 and it hovered around 5000, 5500 most of the time. Now even though the game is very dark, it actually looks pretty good on the OLED, not so much on the LCD. On the LCD I had to play with max brightness, turned up inside the game and max brightness of the of the actual LCD screen which of course reduces battery life so 
I'm not sure uh, if this is a design choice, uh, but uh, the game really felt dark at certain places. Now controller support is perfect, everything is mapped pretty well, there are some weird mapping choices, but it works without any issues, menus were easy to navigate, I didn't run into any bugs or UI scaling issues. Before I finish this video, did you know that I actually have a Steam group and Steam curator page where I post all of my reviews and recommended settings for the games I test? If you don't mind, I'd love for you to follow me there. You can find a list of all the games I've tested and all the recommended settings. And in the Steam group, we can have Steam Deck related discussions and you guys can stay in touch with me and recommend games that I should check out or recommend settings for games that you have tried yourself. Now, still see it isn't a game changer. Uh, it has potential, the world is interesting, the stealth is responsive and the desk clearly aimed high with the tech and atmosphere. And on the Steam Deck, it's a mixed bag at first, but with the right tweaks, uh, it runs smoothly and looks good enough for handheld play. If you're into sci-fi stealth games and don't mind a little tinkering, I'd say keep it on your radar uh, or maybe just wait for a patch or two, but it's definitely playable on the Steam Deck. But thanks for watching. If this video helped you out, give it a like and subscribe for more Steam Deck content. Drop a comment if you're trying Steel Seed and let me know what settings work best for you. And I'll see you guys in the next video.